Hi, I'm Michelle Lim. I'm Paul Govind. And I'm Hannah Harris, and we're all members of the Centre for Environmental Law at Macquarie University in Sydney, Australia. Today, we're talking about our article titled Conceptualising Commons and Reimagining the Laws of Nature for a Telecoupled World. Sorry, sorry, sorry. What's telecoupling? Ooh, I'm so glad you asked. Essentially, it means that we live in a hyper-connected world. So hi historically, scientists have been aware of the interconnected nature across long distances of biophysical systems. So for example, the climate system being connected across this across the globe, of, of um, ocean systems similarly being connected across these huge distances. We're also familiar with the concept of globalization, where social and economic systems are connected across our entire planet. What telecoupling suggests, though, is that social ecological systems are so closely interconnected, so coupled, that you can't think of one separate from the other. So we're dealing with coupled, interconnected social ecological systems in one place, tele that is um, coupled across, connected across vast distances across the world. So that's where you can have actions in one part of the world, in socio-ecological systems in one part of the world, driven by things such as cultural factors, economic factors, and environmental factors, then having flow-on effects far, in far, far away places, in distant places, and that having, again, flow-over effects in other parts of the world. And part of the reason why this occurs is because in, in the Anthropocene, the earth is connected in ways that it never has been before, partly due to the internet or that um, facilitates the flow of information and knowledge, but also in the way that trade and the um, transport of goods and people occurs in ways never before seen in the history of this planet. So what this creates as I'm sure you can already see, is a range of challenges for governing these interconnected systems, but also multiple opportunities. Mm, thanks, Michelle. It seems to me that telecoupling enables us to reconceive the notion of a global ecological commons. The global ecological commons is a burgeoning idea which talks to us about our relationship with nature and it talks to us about place and and our how we can cohabitate and, and co-create with nature a new sense of place whereby uh, we are looking at the flows and feedbacks across telecoupled social ecological systems the hyperconnectedness of these systems can facilitate uh, the creation of shared space and place that overcomes the tyranny of distance and pivots between the local and the global. What we need to remember though with commons is it's not actually commons that we are interested in so much, it's the verb commoning. And it's this process whereby both human and nature can co-create, as I said, these senses of space and place. What, I, what interests me though is how this idea of commons, which is very place-based, very context-specific and very local, how can this idea then be projected across the, what you've already said, Michelle, is the global Anthropocene. The Anthropocene is very much a global phenomenon, something which entangles not just humanity and nature in one place, but humanity and nature across the globe on many different levels, across many different sectors. So what we're looking at then, I think, with telecoupling and commons are two things. Can telecoupling contribute to the reconception of uh, nature? Can it foster collaborative relations that are more responsive and, and responsible? Also then, uh, can the transmission between the sender and receiver, which is so important to telecoupling, how can this uh, correspond to ideas of um, land degradation, knowledge of land degradation between the receiver and the sender, and thereby uh, underlying this growing notion of not just commons, but of responsibility. 
can a notion of responsibility help understand the spillover effects that result between of, of transmission of, of land degradation between sender and receiver? It then brings us to a, a normative question. How is telecoply governed? That's an excellent question. And I think I'm really excited about how transnational law can contribute to answering that question. So transnational law can be understood as a theoretical framework through which you can interpret existing laws and legal systems where traditional distinctions between local, national and global are deconstructed. But at the same time, transnational law can be a really practical tool for developing laws that are responsive to transnational or global challenges. For example, there are transnational law frameworks already in existence designed to deal with illegal logging and deforestation and other issues around supply chain governance, which really brings these global commons and telecoupling ideas um, to, into the real world. Uh, the, these frameworks include national legislation, international treaties, but also soft law norms and governance frameworks that enable a collective approach to these global challenges, while also recognizing a need to adapt law to specific local contexts and challenges. These transnational legal frameworks also create space for the use of technology in law, for example, through the creation of data sharing and cooperation between regulators and civil society groups operating across diverse jurisdictions, which further helps us to reimagine the traditional separation between the local and the global actors and actions. Nice. Thanks, Paul and Hannah. So ultimately what we're saying is for nature to thrive, in the Anthropocene, we must take action on two interrelated fronts. We must embrace the commons and by doing so, overcome dominant worldviews that separate humans and nature. Yes, and we must also adopt a transnational approach to law, which reimagines the traditional separation between international and domestic legal systems and actors. Mm. This will provide novel opportunities for regulation and governance that will support the creation and maintenance of global multi-species commons, spaces where more than human communities can flourish. Thanks everyone. We look forward to your questions.